everyone welcome back to my channel now today for all of you i have some more uh limited edition screen prints so let's get right into it first up is one of the three um elite edition prints from hero complex gallery this was done by keiko and it's a tribute to eric clapton um as you can see there clapton is god uh it's a very cool print in person i really like the detail it's just this doesn't fit my collection at all so um I think I will be selling this, but in person, it's very nice. Keiko always does great work, so I uh, didn't have an issue there. It's on a very glossy, like, pearlescent black, in a way. So that's kind of cool. Also, a very low number, 16 out of 200. I am and always will be a blues guitarist. Like I said, the detail in this is quite amazing. If you're an Eric Clapton fan, this is something you definitely have to get. And then at the top, it says if I could change the world. Pretty cool print. Just, like I said, doesn't fit my collection at all. And I'm a bit disappointed that Hero Complex Gallery chose this as their... Uh, third print in their Elite Edition. Uh, doesn't really make sense to me, but it is what it is. That's what happens when you blind buy into stuff, so can't really complain. But like I said, the detail in this is absolutely fantastic. Keiko does great work. Alright guys, so that's it and we'll get into the next print. Alright, so the next print I have for all of you is a Legend of Zelda print. Um, this was done by Delort and again, this is part of the Elite Edition set. This was the second print that was shown in it. Uh, this is from the game um, Link's Awakening. As you can see, Delort always does great jobs with details. I mean, he only does, I've only ever seen him do black and white. Uh, artwork, but it's very detailed and very nice. An image of Link fighting Nightmare. Then there's a wind fish at the top. Very cool print. I believe this is sized 18 by 24. Um, and has an edition number of 107 out of 260. Two so. There's a link in the ship. There's the windfish's uh, egg at the top. Pretty cool print, very nice detail. But again, this doesn't really fit my collection, so this is going. I gotta say, the detail in the wind page looks really, really awesome. Alright guys, so that's it and we'll get into the next print. Alright, so the next print I have for all of you is a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles print by Ciro Nelly. Uh, this was actually given out at MondoCon this year, um, and it's going to a friend who wanted this print. Um, this is... Uh, the variant version of this print, the regular being all blue with individual color bandanas. This is more of a nod to the original and how they were in the comics. So, uh, very cool uh, print. Uh, it's smaller. It's 18 by 24, I believe. So it's not your typical 24 by 36. But um, if you're a fan of the cartoon on Nickelodeon, um, you'd probably really like this print. I think overall it looks really cool. Of course, here's the detail of the individual turtles. There's Raph, Mikey at the top, Leo, and Donnie at the bottom. I like that they're flying through the city, you know, hopping on rooftops, stuff like that. So, very cool print wise. Very good composition. Alright, guys, so I'll give you one last look of everything and then we'll get into the next print. Alright, so the next print I have for all of you is the Batman Begins print by Patrick Leger. Uh, 
This is an edition of 275, and I believe it's an 18 by 24 print. Um, as you can see, there's Batman using his grappling hook on the train, straight from the scene in the movie. Um, I kind of like the style of this in that it looks very comic book-like, so that's kind of cool. Overall, a simple print, but the reds are very nice. Um, I think I still like Patrick Tong's, or Kevin Tong's the best in terms of uh, the Batman prints Mondo has done for the Batman, or Nolan's Batman series at least. Alright guys, so that's the end of this print and we'll get into the next one. Okay, so the next print for all of you is the Wolfman by Francisco Francavilla. Uh, I pretty much got this because I wanted a companion piece to my uh, creature from the Black Lagoon and um, the Wolfman was always one of my favorite uh, universal monsters besides uh, creature um, and I think this print fits perfectly with that I think this will go nicely with creature from the Black Lagoon uh, by Stan and Vince so I'm really happy about this print I think it turned out a lot nicer than the JPEGs um, the detailing and the fur and everything looks really really good it's very old school um, it's very minimalistic almost so very happy with the way this looks and you know these prints won't be up all year round it's one of those like seasonal prints I think so during that uh, fall Halloween time of year these will definitely go up I think I want one more print to go along with Creature from the Black Lagoon, and that'll probably be the uh, Invisible Man, so I think that'll be the last print I get as a companion piece. Alright, so that's the end of this print, and then we'll get into the next one. Alright, so the next thing I have for all of you are some Tyler Stout handbills. These are uh, from the Avengers Age of Ultron. Now the colorway of these handbills are the same as the cast and crew variant, which is that darker, almost burgundy red, um, and the silver metallics. I think they look really cool, very nicely done, very happy to have these. Supposedly there's 50 of each character made, so I'm happy to have the ones that I have. Um, there's also handbills for the rest of the for the rest of the cast and crew of the Avengers movie, but you know some of those are really expensive, like uh, any of the Iron Man and Captain America handbills. I've seen them go for like one hundred dollars, and I'm just not gonna pay that much for a five by seven handbill, whatever it is. And what's cool is a lot of it has metallic inks, as you can see. In the reds and the silvers so very happy to have these i think these four will look great together just like that i want to see if i can track down quicksilver and scarlet witch but i don't know if that's gonna happen but if not i'm happy with the four that i have i think they look fantastic and i got them for a very good price so very happy about that all right guys so that's it and we'll get into the next print Alright, so the last print I have for all of you in this video is the Django Unchained um, paper variant. And I have to say, this thing in person is really awesome. Um, I didn't think I would like this paper variant as much as I did. Uh, one of the reasons why I like it so much is just the metallic inks in this thing are absolutely crazy. I mean, every aspect of this print has really good, like, um, silver and, like, a gold copper um color metallic inks in it so it's very well done uh i've seen all three versions in person the regular the variant and the wood variant of course the wood variant is still my favorite of the three but i have to say i think between the regular and this variant i would definitely try to get the variant instead um like you can see there the gold and silver metallics are really really well done so that's very, very nice. Um, in terms of composition, I think it's perfect for the movie with the Candyland mansion blowing up in the background. Harry Washington's character. Of course, Django. This print is 
fantastic. Really is. So if you're on the fence, you're thinking about getting this, I would definitely recommend the variant. It's very, very cool and you definitely will be disappointed. Um, I think this variant has an edition size of uh, 250 or 290. So. Alright guys, that's the end of my video. If you ever want a cool place to hang out, meet new people, talk about anything and everything pop culture related, check out Statue Collectors United, the Facebook page, the link will be in the description. Until my next video and review, I will catch you all later, and remember as always, happy collecting.